yeah my dear students uh, dear elders i welcome you to my youtube channel i'm still your teacher teacher nwari in the osbat uganda uh, for today's for this episode i'm going to take you through uh, yet another good but interest and very interesting topic and that is ecology so we are going to look at ecology in this and uh, for this episode specifically we are going to do some introduction then as we continue with other episodes we are going to dig deeper and deeper so what does ecology mean ecology simply means the study of organisms and how they relate with their environment no hey, the study the study of organisms of organisms and how they relate with with their environment with their environment hey, so we under here we are going to that's what we are going to be looking at majorly how do we as organisms because you're also an organism how do you as an organism interact with your environment environment around you uh, now before i can go further before i can go further there are some some key terms we need to know as we start on this topic because those terms i'm going to be overusing them in the next episode so you need to interpret them right away at the beginning what are those terms uh, one of some of those terms actually I've already used some of them in my definition and the first one is uh, environment. So what does environment mean? Yeah, I know at least when somebody talks about environment before you think about trees, what? Yeah, but uh, in this particular case we are going to say uh, environment is anything that surrounds you. Is anything that surrounds an organism. Some of you, when you talk about an organism, you think we are just talking about animals. No, even plants are an uh, organism. Now, even these other microorganisms are also organisms. So anything that surrounds organisms um, is what we call uh, environment. And that's, uh, that, that anything I'm talking about should in one way or the other be having an effect on the life of this organism. So in simple terms, I can say that uh, an environment, uh, the environment is anything, is anything, that surrounds that surrounds an that surrounds that surrounds an organism an organism and influences its life and influences its life hey, anything that is surrounding any anything that is surrounding any organism and in one way or the other affects its life then that is its environment so um for me, where I'm seated here, where, where I'm standing here, here I have got very many things which are surrounding me, of which some of them are my thing. But you can also ask yourself where you are standing. Just look around. Anything that is surrounding you, and in one way or the other, that is affecting the the way of life. That is the, that's what we are meaning by that's your environment, as far as now. Uh, then another term we have got is biosphere. By the way, um, environment, biosphere, and habitat. These three terms kind of want to look the same, but uh, they are also having some difference. So we have seen what environment means. Now, what does the biosphere mean? Biosphere, you see, it's from, from what bio and then sphere. So bio, you know that bio means life. So um, this is part of the earth. This is part of the earth and its atmosphere. Mm -hmm. This is part, part of the earth, part of the earth. Uh, part of the earth and its atmosphere and its atmosphere where life is possible where life is possible and bio means life so the where sphere is uh, the earth and its atmosphere so any part of the earth and its atmosphere where an organism can be able to reach and be able to survive, or where organism can be able to, to live, then we say that one, a biosphere. So it's a part of the earth and its atmosphere where life is possible. Then another one is habitat. Now habitat, for it, you see, uh, for, 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 for the case of uh, these two, these two are kind of big. Uh, these ones are somehow bigger uh, in the context. But the habitat is 
is now when you have now down. So habitat is that precise place, that precise place in the environment, that precise place where an organism lives. Mm -hmm. So habitat is a simple place, is a place, that precise place where an organism, where an organism lives. For example, if it's now you are you, are, you are as a human being, your habitat is probably I can now say your home is your habitat. If you look at a bird, uh, a nest, a nest is a habitat, uh, is for, for, for what? For, for something like a bird. So that small place where an organism is able to live is what we are calling a habitat. And then we have got these other two. We have got these two other terms. We have got one being a population, the number next being community. I want to take note. There is just a few things, a few like two words, which are differentiated between these two words. Now, a population, a population in, uh, uh, to begin with, is a group, is a group of organisms, is a group of organisms of the same, of the same species in a given in a given area at a given at a given time take note i am saying of the same what of the same species of the same species and take note i am saying at a given time and i'm saying at a given area those words are very key when i talk about species you know a species is a group of organism is a group of organism that can be able to interbreed produce viable offsprings. Talk about, for example, human beings are of the same species, sapiens. Yeah, so that's why human beings, because of their human beings of the same species, uh, that's why they can be able to interpret a man, can, can get, can, can meet with, or can uh, meet with a woman, and then they produce children who can also again reproduce. So that is, we are of the same species. Likewise, cows, also of the same species, goats of the same species. So those organisms which can be able to, to interbreed produce viable offsprings, we call them species. So when you are talking about population, we are specific on that group on, on the on the species level. For example, like a, a group of human beings, a group of cows, a group of uh, a group of mobile trees, you know. So that group or that number of organisms of that particular species. In a given area at a given time, why we am why I'm saying a given why I'm uh, specific about a given time is because as time goes on, uh, so the number of these organisms in that given area keeps on changing. So sometimes you may find someone somebody calling it that is a number of organisms. So if somebody say is a number of organisms, still they are correct. Also, a group of organisms still is so correct. So it's a group of organisms, a number of organisms of the same species in a given area at a given time. So, take note of those keywords. So, when you come to community, for it, it is, it is a group. It's a group of organisms. It's a group of organisms of different, of different species, of different species in a given area, in a given area, at a given at a given time, at a given time, so the difference comes in here. That when you're talking about community, when you say community, eh, our community, even from a layman's understanding, when you say community, community, you have very many organisms. So, for example, you can still talk about a given community, you can have human beings, you can have trees, you can have goats, you can have, you know, cows. So, that community is having very many. Uh, organisms. So those organ, the trees, the goats, and the human beings, and so on, those are all different species. So uh, they all, all of them together, they form what we call a community. So a community is a group of organisms, uh, is a group of organisms of different species in a given area and also at a given time. Because as time goes on, uh, the, uh, these organisms might keep on changing. They might be having human beings, and after some time human beings disappear from that area. So in that case, in that case the community would have changed. So we become specific on a given period of time. Yeah, and by the way, some of you have issues to do with this species. When I talk about species, some of you still get confused. A species, 
When we talk about that, it is a group of organs that can be able to interpret to produce viable offsprings. When we talk about viable offsprings, it means there are those offsprings which can also be able to reproduce. For example, if uh, if a human being, if a man goes, goes and gets a woman and they, they produce children, and those children are also able to produce other grandchildren and so on, then it means they are the children were viable. But if you if the two meet, for example, if you, uh, if the two organisms meet and then what they what they are produced is not be, is not able to reproduce, then it means that those two organisms are different species. For example, I know most of you might be aware of a horse and a donkey. These two organisms want to resemble, but they are different species. So when a donkey and a horse meet or mate, yeah, they can produce by the way young one. A young one is called a mule, which is the, in the middle there. Is not a horse. A horse is not a donkey. It's just in the middle there. But you know what? That mule is infertile. So since the mule cannot be able to reproduce again, then it means the donkey and the horse which mate to produce that mule are of different species. So that's the major difference when you look at these two. Then we come to autocology. Autocology, this is the study. Yeah, logic, of course, you know, at the, as far as God is concerned, this word logic means it comes from logos, which means the study of. So autocology is a study. Uh, this is a study. Of uh, here you study about in ecology you study about uh, one species. Mm -hmm. The study of the ecology of is the study of uh, how, for example, let me do it like this. This is the study of of how uh, one species, one species of an organism of an organism. Interacts, interacts with it, its environment. Or you can just simply say that it's an ecological study. It's an ecological study. It's an ecological study. An ecological study that involves that involves uh, a single species. For example, if I say go to carry out an ecological study research about uh, organisms and uh, I am basically studying about uh, for example frogs or human beings. I'm only doing ecology about human beings. That is one species. So in that case my type of ecology or my ecological study we call it autoecology. So it means synecology S Y N E C O L O G Y Synecology it means this one is an ecological study. So it means you can say tell me it's an ecological study that involves that involves more than more than one species. For example, if I go to carry out an, a study, an ecological study on how, for example, lions and tigers interact within a national park. Since I'm now dealing with the two organisms, the lion and the tiger, these are different species. So in that case, my study, the study I'm carrying out is called as in ecology, that is my ecological study is called synecology because I am dealing with two species and how they interact with the, their environment. Then another term we also have is what you call ecosystem. Ecosystem, I know most of you might actually could have even heard about this ecosystem. Ecosystem is simply um, a unit in an environment. Um, this is a unit in an environment and an environment consisting consisting of living living and non living non living components components living together living together in harmony living together in harmony. Yeah, it means I have a given unit in an environment. For example, if we talk about uh, this environment here, we have got land, we have got uh, water. You can, so it means you can have like an ecosystem of, of water, like the Victoria is an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So in that like Victoria, you have got uh, living things, Water itself is a, is a, I mean, we have got non-living things, water itself is a non-living thing. We have got living things there like fish and other frogs and so on. So all those 
all those organisms, both living and then those other, those other ones which are non-living, they are all living together in harmony. In other words, they ensure that where they are living, that area where they are living is self, uh, is, is self, uh, is self -sus sustaining. So these two live together in such a way that uh, that unit becomes a self-sustaining unit. So that component within an environment which has got living and non-living components, all living together, all working together, all living together in harmony, all interacting together to ensure that that unit is self-sustaining, we call it an ecosystem. For example, an example of doing is like a water ecosystem, like, like, like Victoria, for those ones who live in Uganda or who live in East Africa, or in a water body. Okay, so I want to extract more on this ecosystem in this episode. Uh, so, we have good components, we have what we call components of ecosystem. And from and from that from that definition that I've given you, it means you can easily tell me what are the components of this ecosystem. From that definition, it means we have got two components from the way you see that the, from you see that definition. So those two components are number one, we have what you call a biotic component about component and then we have what we call biotic component. Hey, I know some of you are lucky, but now you have now uh, you have now brought in other new things we thought you are going to get from the, the title. Yes, I've got it from this definition. Now bio I've told you what bio means life. So when I talk about biotic component I'm meaning the living the living component. So an ecosystem has got the called the living components, those components which have got life. So the abiotic is the opposite of biotic. So the abiotic components are the non, the non living components, the non living components of the ecosystem. So the components of the ecosystem are two. We have got in the ecosystem we have got what we call non living components and living components. Non-living being called abiotic and then the living called the biotic. So these are the two things which are living together to in harmony uh, to ensure that the, that system or the ecosystem is self-sustaining, is a self-sustaining unit. So uh, in this I would like to begin with the uh, let me begin with the, the biotic. The biotic component. The biotic component. So the biotic component of the ecosystem is made up of majorly three. It's made up of three. So this bird component, the bird component, the, the living component of the ecosystem is made up of three. So these three are one, we have got what we call uh, we have got we call producers. We have got we call producers. Producers, these are these are plants, these are green plants, these are green plants and and some bacteria, and some bacteria, which are capable, capable of making their own food, making their own food, and which are capable of making their own food. So, like they are produce producers, these plants are able to make their own food for the for the rest of the organisms. So that's what we mean by uh, that's what we mean by producers. So talk about the plants which are which are manufacturing food that we eat and so on. So that component, all that living, the the biotic component of the ecosystem, we call them. Those we have with the uh, the plants and so on. The green plants is spe specifically they are categorized under what we call producers. Then another category under biotic components we have called what we call consumers. Another category under about components of what we call consumers. And I think that's where I belong as an individual. I think that's why you also belong because you are a consumer. You make your own food, I think, you know. So, me and you, we are consumers. Apart from me and even the animals. Animals, because animals don't make their own food. They depend on other organisms. So, consumers, these are, uh, these are organisms. These are organisms which, which depend, which depend on others. That is basically on producers for food. 
to food. In other words, they obtain food from the producers. Animals feed on plants. So it means animals are consumers. Now, this consumer, uh, we can categorize these consumers by the way. These consumers can be categorized. We can have a category which we call, uh, we call what, we, what we call primary consumers. Primary consumers. Uh, primary consumers. So primary consumers, these are consumers which feed directly, directly on producers. Yeah, these consumers feed directly on, it means if we, we have said producers, for example, have green plants, it means the primary consumer are those consumers which feed on the green plants. Let me give you one example. Give me anything that feeds on green plants. Let me put an example like it, e.g. a grasshopper. A grasshopper. A grasshopper, like from the name, it feeds on grass, on vegetables. So a grasshopper, since it's good directly on grass, is called a primary consumer. Then another category under consumer, we can also have what we call, uh, from primary, you come to secondary. So I have what I call secondary consumers. So secondary consumers, it means, yeah, so you can use the tail. So it means secondary consumers, these are the consumers which feed. I mean, these ones feed on primary, primary producers. Uh, sorry, sorry. These ones feed on primary consumers. Primary consumers. Hey, so the secondary consumers are those consumers which feed on primary consumers. For example, if we still use this example of ours, like a grasshopper, which organ will feed on a grasshopper? I think the birds. Okay, let me use the hen. Hey. So an example here I have here is the e.g. a hen. A hen, I'm going in line with this example, a hen feeds on grasshopper or a bird feeds on grasshopper. So a hen or a bird which feeds on grasshopper is a secondary consumer because the grasshopper is a primary consumer because it feeds on grass. Then, so you can tell me the third one. So the third one is called a tertiary. Okay, somebody is saying university, no. Tertiary consumer. Tertiary consumer or tertiary consumers. So the tertiary consumers, so it means tertiary consumers do what? It means this one is feed on, it means those ones feed on secondary. It means those ones feed on secondary. It means they feed on secondary consumers. On secondary consumers. Yeah, it means these ones feed on secondary consumers. Now let us go in line with the, with this one. So I have a grasshopper, I have got a hen. So what, which organ is feeds on a hen? Eh? Which, which organ is feeds on a hen? Eh, some of you are saying man. Eh, eh. So a man, a man can also be, a man can, can because a man eats a feeds on a hen. So a man can be a second, can be a a consumer. Or you can also put this bar, let me, let, me be, let me put this one here. I have got what I call a hawk. Hmm? I can put, for example, an eagle. An eagle. Eh. For those ones who stay in the village, you must have witnessed. Yeah, you must have one day witnessed an eagle feeding on a, on on a, on a hen. Uh, these young young chicks, when they, they can easily be eaten by an eagle. So uh, the, the, the the an eagle which feeds on a hen, a hen is a secondary consumer. So an eagle which feeds on a hen, or which eats a hen, is what you call a tertiary consumer. So tertiary consumer is that consumer which feeds on a secondary consumer. So an eagle feeds on a hen. A hen feeds on the grasshopper. Grasshopper feeds on the grass. So, grasshopper which feeds on the grass, which is a producer, and the grasshopper is a primary consumer. A hen which feeds on the grasshopper, a hen which feeds on the primary consumer is called a secondary consumer. Then an ego which feeds on secondary consumer, that is a hen, is called a tertiary consumer. So, and so those, those are the categories which are under, those are the categories which are falling under the consumers. So our third one, our third one is still another category of biotic components, and the last one is what you call the deco of the decomposers. The decomposer is also, is also about a living component. We call these are living organisms. So these decomposers, these are organisms, these are organisms which, which feed on dead and decaying organic matter. 
organic matter within within the environment you can give an example the best example here here we are saying EG, here we are saying we, we talked about green plants, we talked about some bacteria. So the best example here is for example like what? Like most bacteria. Most bacteria are very important as far as the composition is concerned. These are living organisms, that's why we are calling them about components. But uh, these living organisms, uh, their main role is the, uh, decomposing. So they help in, the, uh, in decomposing organic uh, living organisms. And this one is very important also in recycling the nutrients within an, an ecosystem. So, that's, I think maybe I've also forgotten something. Uh, one of the key terms here, I think, one term I've forgotten here, uh, is what we call an ecological niche. Yeah, an ecological niche. An ecological niche, as far as the ecology is concerned, is, very, is a key term. And in this case, it means, uh, this ecological means that it means the a place where an organism an organism lives and the role and the role it plays there it plays there for example where does the bacteria in the, in the, where does the bacteria in the, in the environment where does the bacteria stay in those areas where we have the composing organic matter and what is its importance its importance so its role is the the composition, so the area where the organism is staying and the role it is playing there is what we call an ecological niche. I've forgotten that. So these are the about these are the biological components within the ecosystem. So in case they ask you, these are the ones. So in the next episode, we are going to be looking at uh, the biological components, the, the non-living components of the ecosystem and how uh, it influences uh, the, the, living, the living component, the living aspect of the living components of the ecosystem. I am sure that within this introduction you have learned something. Please watch out for the next episode where we are going to look at the living components and also the subsequent episodes which are going to be looking at food chains and food webs. Thank you very much and may God bless you.